Hey guys, wow, it is November and I wanted to bring you the Seattle real estate updates. So in case you missed it, we had a crazy month in October as far as interest rates go. We, I was calling everybody in September, you know, great news, interest rates are down. And then they went up in October, two major reasons for that. Number one, we had over the top employment numbers, meaning lots of people were getting hired. And number two, political polling moved in Trump's favor. Now, how did this affect interest rates? Number one, let's start with the employment report. Basically, hiring went really well. We had a lot of new jobs created, and they went back and revised other numbers upward. And when the economy does well, uh, the Fed actually says, whoa, we've got to slow things down. And so they increase interest rates to kind of cool off the economy. Now, since that time, we have had lower numbers and there are projections that interest rates will uh, respond in kind. So it's possible that um, in the next couple of weeks, weeks, we'll see reduced interest rates again. But um, that's not what happened in October. And in fact, not only was the jobs market report really good, but with Trump potentially coming into office, what they thought in October, um, the markets responded by anticipating what happened when he went into office last time, which was increased inflation. And that was due to his policies like uh, tariffs and uh, lower income taxes. So people had more money to spend, more money going into the economy leads to inflation. And so again, to cool off the economy, the Fed responds by raising interest rates. Now, where will it go from here? Chances are that interest rates will come back down. In fact, a lot of people are projecting lower interest rates in 2025. We can see from this slide that Fannie Mae, uh, MBA, which is Mortgage, Mortgage Brokers Association and Wells Fargo are all predicting different interest rates throughout 2025, getting into the 5% range. This seems to be a common theme. One of our mortgage brokers was calling five and a half by June. These uh, projections are not quite that sunny, but it does look like there's an expectation for falling interest rates uh, throughout the next six months to 12 months, but it could be a bumpy ride. As we said, you know, interest rates were down. Now they shot back up. Hopefully we'll see them coming down again in the future. And here's another slide showing what that would look like. You can see uh, pre-COVID, we were at kind of these normal levels around 5%. Six is the national average uh, in the past over a long period of time. And they went really low during COVID because uh, they were trying to stimulate the economy. Now that uh, worked, the economy got heated up. And so they're trying to cool it off by keeping the interest rates high as that works, as they see data reflecting the efficacy of the policies, the Fed will likely continue to slowly drop interest rates. And how will that affect home buyers and sellers? Well, uh, this is a chart showing what would happen if homeowners had a rate below 6%, would they in fact be tempted to move or to buy? And it looks like over half would feel like they could sort of release that lock-in effect, those golden handcuffs of their amazing interest rates from 2021, and consider a move if uh, interest rates were below six, which it looks like they will be um, below five, does not seem likely. So anyway, that unlocks about half of the inventory. This is where we stand right now. Interest rates are high at around 7%, uh, close to where they were earlier in the year. Uh, but that can always change. It was a pretty sharp increase over the month of October after months of downward trend. So hopefully uh, the downward trend will resume. This is presumably just one of the bumps in the road along the way. Let's see how that affects our data here in Puget Sound. This is a chart of the real estate prices, median home prices um, for central Puget Sound area. And it's very cyclical. So every fall, home prices go down. Every spring, they go up. But overall, the trend is positive, and people are seeing their homes appreciate uh, on average about fifty thousand per year, which is fantastic. I mean, that's you're making fifty thousand a year for just living in your house. Not a bad way to go. 
Um, reminder that the median home price in the area is 700, 800, 900, depending on you're in Seattle, King County, Snohomish County, Bellevue. But um, overall, that's kind of the average that we're seeing. So adjust up or down, depending on if you're in a $300,000 condo, it's not going to be that high. And if historical patterns hold true, we're at the beginning of our reset on prices. So if you are a buyer and you are out looking for a home, you have a high level of inventory right now. This uh, chart is showing the active listings in the Seattle area, and you can see that they're relatively high. That means there are a lot of homes to choose from, and as the market is slowing down, there aren't as many new buyers entering the market in November and December, January in the dark holiday times. So you could potentially have more homes to choose from, a little bit more negotiating power. Uh, it's a good time to be looking if you don't want the competition of multiple offers and that type of a thing. On the other hand, if you wait till spring, you'll see a lot of new inventory coming on the market. Oh, so a new home every week for you to take a look at. Um, but a lot of buyers come out in the spring as well, even early winter, kind of uh, that mid-January price point. It's New Year, new, new Year's resolution to buy a house. Buyers come out pretty early. And so if you want that non-competitive window, it's open now. Come on out. Um, and if, if you want to wait till spring, you can, if, especially if you don't like the inventory that you're seeing now. But I would encourage you, uh, if you're kind of looking for a deal, this is a good time to be looking. Likewise, sellers, um, if you don't have to sell right now, I just talked with a, a lady in Kenmore who had a house. She's been renting. She's ready to sell it. And I said, let's not bring it on the market this month. Let's wait if you can. You rent it out for three more months to some traveling nurses or something like that. We'll bring it on the market in February or March. We should be in a great position to be in that rising market where home prices are going up, buyers are excited, and there's a lot of momentum in the market. And this is the chart showing our pending transactions, which are going down, um, but still kind of around normal levels. So this gives you an idea of how the national trends, especially with the interest rate and the Federal Reserve, are impacting our local Seattle market. If you're a seller, it doesn't hurt to get started early. You can always reach out to me. Let me know what you're thinking about, like this lady in Kenmore. We're going to go visit her house. We're going to make sure it's in good shape. We're going to secret shopper all the comps and see what the competition looks like as far as pricing. And then when spring comes and we're ready to launch, We'll have everything all lined up. So let me know how I can help. Again, Emily Cressy with HomeProAssociates.com at Keller Williams. Looking forward to helping you make it a great home buying and selling day. I just wanted to say also thank you to uh, one of our office's preferred lenders here, Kyle Berquist. He provided a lot of the research on the uh, interest rates and the charts. So thank you, Kyle. He's a great lender. If anyone needs to get pre-approved or pre-qualified, feel free to reach out to him.